Hello, hello. So, by the way, if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, it's down there. Please do subscribe. Uh, I'd really like to build my channel if I can, and I can only do that with your help, and me love you log time if you do so. So, I was at Aberdeer Races yesterday. Now, if you've never heard of Aberdeer Races, you can be forgiven. Aberdeer is a small little town in the Welsh Valleys. And uh, for a number of years now, they've been running a race meet uh, on a weekend in July. Now, the unusual thing about this is, well, apart from the fact that it's on the same calendar as the Isle of Man TT and the Northwest 200 and, and what have you, and John McGuinness was actually there this weekend. We've had TT racers actually racing in it. But the really unique thing about it, the amazing thing about it, is that it's actually in a public park in the centre of this small town. So I did put another kind of snippet of a video on my channel. I, I just shot it live on my phone while I was there. Didn't quite get uh, as much video as I wanted to. Uh, I can blame Battle Kid for that. A very boisterous and happy two-year-old watching motorbikes racing was quite uh, was quite amazing. I actually just enjoyed that, to be honest. Um, but normally, it's it's just this little enclosed park in the middle of town, little wall around it. It's got a duck pond. It's got a little kind of coffee shop right in the middle. Uh, got a little pathway that runs around the outside, playground in the middle. But literally, the pathway is what they use as the racetrack. So, as I said, you can, you can have a look at that other little snippet of video I did to kind of get a view of what it looks like. But also in the middle of the, gre the greeny, kind of grassy area, uh, in the centre of what is the racetrack on the race weekend. So they have a, a load of stands, and kind of little shop type tent gaze gazebo things. And one of them, actually were selling uh, mini ATVs which were awesome little things I never realized you could actually buy a little 4x4 kind of actually I think they're two-wheel drive but a little quad you could buy an ATV quad for under 500 quid it's like a 125 cc for under 500 quid and right in the very center of this kind of parkway area yesterday they had uh, some little inflatables that they used as uh, just a, a kind of cordon and in the middle of that they had a couple of these ATVs that you could have a go on. So um, it wasn't all that expensive, £2.50 for five minutes, I thought I've got to give it a go. Uh, I was actually over buying some t-shirts and jackets and stuff for the little lad uh, and he was over stood looking at this thing. Um, mouth agape he was just amazed by these little things kind of flying around with his granddad so I went over and put him on they put a little helmet on him he sat on the ATV I kind of sat behind him and steered and he just did not want to get off more and again were uh, the only words I kind of heard out of him and you've never heard whoops of joy like you hear out of a two-year-old at a, at a race meet I mean I was taken aback I know he loves motorbikes but um, just the little whoops of joy were just phenomenal. So I've actually got Battlemont convinced that 500 quid is not a lot to spend on one of these things. And right by where we live, uh, literally kind of two minutes away, less than that, there's uh, a gate onto common land that runs up into the, um, into the common land around the the Brecon Beacons and uh, there's a little bit of space right beside our houses there where I can actually take them out and kind of give them a little bit of training so I'm going to do that uh, so if any of you have any recommendations I mean the one I looked at was an Interceptor 125 I think it was called uh, which looked quite cool 
But if anyone's got any recommendations, uh, then please, uh, please do let me know. I mean, the little lad's only two and a half now, so he won't be on one on his own until he's another year, three and a half, four maybe. Um, I have heard a rumour though that Santa Claus uh, is going to give him a an electric, a 12 volt electric KTM uh, electric bike quad type thing for Christmas this year. But well, I'm probably tempted. Always out to enjoy themselves. What are their indicators still on, silly boy? So yeah, I'm going to give that a go. I think that will be, uh, I think that will be good fun, and I think he'll love it too. He's got his little balance bike at the minute, which I think is is critical to getting his kind of balance sorted out, kind of getting some core strength in him. But he's belting around the place on that now, and going really fast and holding his feet up and kind of turning around and figure eights and what have you. So um, I think he's he's quite used to it. Uh, but I'm tempted by one of these quads and, uh, and that little 50cc dirt bike, I reckon, uh, within the year. So if anyone's already done this stuff with their kids, let me know. I'd really be keen to um, to hear from people who've already done this for their for their children and any kind of things to watch out for. Um, I mean, obviously the protective gear is going to be critical and the neck brace and possibly leg braces, I don't know, but definitely boots and gloves, a little jacket. Mm, proper helmet. Uh, but if you've got any advice, I'd really appreciate it. The other thing that they had at this show was a stand for the IAM. So a couple of the lads I know were, were on that stand. Had a bit of a chat with them. All good. We're getting some new members in, which is a which is a good thing. I think the IAM were trying to change the image of it just being for old men. Which is which is good uh, because honestly they are skills for life. It's it's amazing the stuff they teach you at your own pace as well. And I think I talked about it before, but you know it's not just the uh, the progress, but the restraint side of it as well is is really critical. You know when not to make an overtake. You know when not to push it. When to uh, actually assess where you're not going to make sensible progress within the speed limits. So, you know, it's a, it's a really kind of balanced kind of training course, which is quite good. But one of the other stands they had there was for blood bikes. Now, if you've never seen blood bikes, again, you can be forgiven. But these are volunteers, essentially, who will take uh, blood and plasma and documents and whatever else uh, between hospitals. Uh, and, and various places for the NHS here in the UK. And I'd written to them back in, I've got to see, go, you're clear, go, go, go. So we've got to see, um, got to see that that road is clear and I couldn't with that line of cars and that poor lady is trying to look through the side of a fully loaded 1290. So, um, Blood bikes will kind of shift a load of plasma documents, all that kind of stuff around. And I'd written to them back in March and said, you know, I'm keen to know more. I didn't actually hear anything. But I spoke to two of the guys there yesterday, and as long as you hold an advanced uh, certification, riding certification, be that IAM or ROSPA or whatever it might be, you can volunteer for them. So I said, right, sign me up. Now, the thing is, I don't drink alcohol anymore. Which obviously is very weird for a, a man of Irish heritage. Uh, but when little battle kid turned up, I'd stop drinking when battle mum was pregnant. Uh, in solidarity with her. And we had one night after the, the boy was born, we said, let's have a couple of glasses of wine, have a glass of champagne, a couple of glasses of wine. Got to 2 a.m., went to bed, the boy started screaming at half past five. And I thought, oh, I just wish he'd go back to sleep. He's about six weeks old at this point. And right there, 
as I was lying there, hung over, badly, tired, I thought to myself, how dare you wish that that poor little boy was going back to sleep? You did this, and you brought him into the world. So I got up, I gave him a bottle, I rubbed him back to sleep in my arms on the sofa, and promised myself then and there that I was going to give up booze. And I did. And that was it. But the good thing about that is, um, I can be designated driver and not, um, not have to worry about it. And I never have to worry about going out early on a Sunday morning on the bike, like I did this morning, to kind of get a couple of videos and do a little bit of exploring. And I mean, someone had mentioned before, Dervman, I think it was you had mentioned before, that uh, I've always got empty roads where I am. Well, it tends to be because I get out quite early in the morning when everybody else is nursing a hangover. I've got the roads to myself. And that little trick was taught to me by a guy who used to live across the road. Uh, thank you very much, Timothy. Uh, where he would try to get me out really early on Sunday mornings, but I was too busy to have a glass of wine on Saturday night. But he was right. He was absolutely right. So, as a byproduct, obviously, uh, not busy at the weekends, I mean, I can, I can drive a ride any time I want or need to. And especially that I'm doing a lot of work from home these days, and my clients are kind of global, literally global, South American countries. Uh, I've got North America, I've got France, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, uh, I've got Russia, South Africa, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, and then on further over into India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, China, Japan. I mean, I literally have um, clients all over the world, which means working from home is a lot uh, easier and advisable. And I get some, I get to travel and go and kind of see them as well, which is quite good. But um, turn around on the road on a bend, blind both ways, just fucking bizarre. One cock one will point, dude. Welcome. So, uh, means working from home and not boozing, and these guys needing these guys needing volunteers on the weekend. It's perfect. So I am going to volunteer to be a blood bike rider, and hopefully, um, and hopefully give a little back. I think of the people who are going to need blood and plasma on the weekend. Unfortunately, uh, it's likely there'll be some bikers in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of give back and put some put some riding to use. So I had a quick chat with them, see what they do. Basically, they'll check your certificate. They'll put you on one of their bikes, which uh, does have, I believe, blues and twos, dual tone siren and flashing lights, uh, which will be fun in and of itself, I think, if you're riding one of those things. Uh, but they put you on one of those bikes and they bring you out for an assessed ride. They really want to see how you ride that, that bike. And they put you through some uh, admin training half a day, kind of the paperwork and all the rest of the kind of stuff that you need to you need to sort out. And then they'll actually start some further training with you as well, which should be quite nice. And the way I see it is uh you're welcome. The way I see it it's a bit of give back but then uh, I'll also learn some new skills and up my own riding as well. So that's it. That's it for this time. I'm going to try and keep these videos a little bit shorter if I can. And I'm going to try and get another camera on the bike as well so I can get some additional angles as well. So, um, But that's it for now. Back onto these boring roads and uh, heavy traffic. So until next time, ciao.
See you then.